Right. I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm just starting the stream and I'm watching the bitrate. If it tanks, then I'm kind of out of luck. Um, yeah, what a way to start the day. I've spent half an hour, just, well, just over half an hour, trying to figure out internet issues. Looks like it's stable, though. So it might be okay. Um, okay. I think we're good. Um, restart my modem. Disconnected everything, plugged it back in, restart my PC several times, checked all my settings, um, reset up streaming from OBS. Everything is completely from scratch again. So if it drops out again, I'm going to assume it's a service issue. Um, but anyway, here we are. Um, so yeah, end of last stream, we got to a generally acceptable point. Still watching that fucking bit, right? Um, generally acceptable point of the model. So we um, did some model transfer. Oh, sorry, topo transfer. Just realized music isn't on. Let's get some Spotify going. Okay. If it's Spotify that knocks it out, I'm going to be pissed. Um, let's start the next song. There we go. Okay, bit rate isn't tanking yet. Um, but yeah, so we got to a generally acceptable point with the sculpt, which is this guy. Um, so it's not 100%, obviously, I mean, it's a few hours work, um, but it's good enough, so I'm not really too worried. Uh, I'm going to reshare, um, in fact, no, I'm not going to bother. Uh, I'll let everyone else click a broken link, uh, although if anyone wants to share the stream, by all means. Uh, fuck off. Hide notification. Oh, it's going from my speakers. There you go. Um... But yeah, so uh, we started on the retopo transfer from John Singer Sergeant, which is this guy. Um, so obviously we lost some stuff with the eyes. I mean, you lose stuff everywhere when you do topo transfer. Uh, but we have topology. So um, what I'm going to do, I think, is rather than spend too long getting things that the eyelids correct with the new topo, I'm going to stay in Maya and make sure the topo is actually what I want. Because if I now spend loads of time fixing the eyes, and then I change the topo, I'm going to have to do all that again. So I'd rather just spend time now, fix up things like the inside of the mouth, make sure the UVs are what I want, um, and we can kind of take things from there. So I will take a look at the Mona geometry, because um, I think for the inside of the mouth, I'm going to use the teeth and gums separate approach, um, just so I have a bit more control over it. And I want to just reevaluate my UVs and see if I actually want to commit to the amount of stuff that they have. Um, but yeah, so let's get into Maya. So I'll take this off screen because I don't really need it. Still watching that bit, right? Um, it did drop, but only by a thousand. Um, but yeah, so we have our raw sculpt. Let's close our render window outliner. So we got, I believe this is, yeah, there we go. So we've got our actual geometry here. So let's bring in Mona. Um, and we'll salvage what we want to salvage from that. So let's go modeling, publish, try Mona. Which always makes me feel like Michael Jackson when I say that. Um, so we, we know we don't need the clothing. So we can get rid of that. Um, I know I don't need the eyes. So I can get rid of that. Uh, in a mouth, we may need. Um, but no, she had an issue. Turn back face masking helps with that. Yeah, so I actually had back face masking enabled. Um, that's why I was really confused by it, because it should have been fine, uh, but just wasn't. Um, but yeah, so. Yes, yeah, so this is what UVs are kind of what I go with a bit more. Um, although this has a full body which we don't need, so I'll, I'll continue to think about it. Um, but I do like the Mona model, like generally how it is, a bit more than the Johnson Sergeant model. Um, but yeah, so we have the inner mouth, which is the main thing I'm here for. So let's get rid of that. I said get rid of that. There we go. And drag this out here. Then 
modify sense pivot. When did we start? About five minutes ago. Beautiful. Um, so we want this to stay zeroed in the X. But obviously we need to scale it until it fits about right. No, oh, didn't mean to do that. That doesn't matter that much. Just move that. It's too far forward. Okay, shading X ray. Feels okay. Gem really fits the curve of the lips, not quite, but close enough. Bit rate still going strong. Okay, I think we're out of the woods. Um, yeah, so we got our teeth in there. So the reason this is kind of an issue is because the original Singer Sergeant model is modeled with gums like fully built in, uh, which we just don't need. So I'm going to remove those. Uh, I'll keep the rest of it as it is, but yeah, I'm going to have to remove the gums. So let's get started on that. Uh, first off, how are we going to go about this? The easiest way would just be to do that and then fill this hole, which actually would be even easier if rather than delete a face loop. I just delete. I thought I was about to pop up saying that it's dropped out again. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I'm gonna be so on edge today. Um, I can just delete all these instead. And then keep everything else. That's a, oh, the tongs modeled into. Why did I put so much effort into Transic Sergeant? Delete these. Okay. Needs collapse edges. Okay. That will smooth out pretty easily. Uh, how did you eat up all this time? It was in the, the end of the last stream that I did this. Um, we can keep that, I guess. Uh, yeah, it was in the end of the last stream that I did all this stuff. So, basically just copied the topology from John Singer Sergeant, which I'm now dealing with uh, cleaning up. Uh, let's see. How am I gonna go about this? Let's turn off X-ray, that will help. Okay, what's what's the plan for this? I need to use the lasso tool, don't I? Let's just go through, do that. to see what I'm doing now. Um, okay, so we obviously need to get rid of all this. Collapse all this. Ooh. That's like lasso. Where's the actual cursor? So one of the things I hate with um, uh, one of the things I really hate is like ambiguous cursors. 
Like shit where you can't actually see precisely what you're selecting. Okay, so now we can collapse edge. There we go. So now we'll get our sculpt tools. Sculpting. How big is the brush? There it is. Okay, and we're going to use um, there, symmetry. Um, let's do world X. What? Oh, it's okay. Okay, so that's relaxing. I want smoothing. Hey, Esprilla, how's it going? Probably change my uh, focal arm, shouldn't I? Make things a bit easier to get inside. Wait, instance. There we go. That's more like it. Now let's check out the uh, upper guns. Yeah, it's about what I expected. Um, so it'll take a few passes, but that's fine. Can I ask you something about Quadro? Of course. Ask anything. And you guys can ask me about anything, honestly. I mean,. Not really personal life, sure, but like CG stuff, by all means. And one of the big reasons to do these streams is to kind of share knowledge, so. I like teaching. Granted, I, I can't spend like hours explaining a topic if I'm not actively doing it, but. Too big. Okay, let's assign the uh, same material. Okay, mesh display. Let's face, mesh to display, soften edge. Is there anything I want to borrow from this? I don't think I need the hands. Although, let's just double check. 
How many edges is this? That's 64 edges. Is that symmetry? It is. Let's turn off symmetry. So this is... 64 edges, alright. Does that mean it's not symmetrical in waterways? Um, is that really 64? And this one is 32. That doesn't look right though. I guess it is. I mean, I could subdivide the hands up one, but that feels a bit intense. If I need hands, is what I mean. Um, I have a problem with smooth. Um, with quad draw, when I smooth, the center of the edges uh, collapse and automatically merge if I use symmetry. Um, I mean, you want center edges to be merged, right? Or do you mean like you've got one center line and then you're trying to smooth edges near it and they're snapping inwards? Um, if the latter, just use a smaller brush. It should should avoid that. I think we need. And the body topo is quite weak. Um, I feel like it would be beneficial to use the body from this mesh. I can cut off most of it. What's the um? What's the edge count around the neck? Eighteen. Oh. <laughs> So 18 is going to be a bitch. Um, 36, okay. So I'm assuming it's going to be 32 or something, but let's find out. 74, 64. It's not an imposh impossible job, but not going to be easy either. Let's see. If I just cut off. That gives us 36. Cool. That's what I expected. So then, this, if I go to here, this will still give us 70 something, right? 72. I mean, that is one, just one subdivision, isn't it? How many polygons is this? This is already 47,000. I don't need a tail, so I can get rid of that. Just quickly patch up some of this stuff. Fill hole. Want to cut. Uh, one center line in the middle, also with a small brush. Okay, I'm not really sure what could be causing that, but if you can go onto my Discord um, and post pictures of what you mean, um, we can probably help you. There's a link to Discord in the description of this video. Obviously, the body would need to be re-sculpted because it's very stylized. Um, can I just... So I'm not sure I'll want to just subdivide it one, though. That's the problem. I know for sure I don't need legs. There's something off about the scale. <laughs> okay, let's center pivot, modify, center pivot. It's actually not too far off at this stage. So let's get rid of the body. How far down do we need it? Because the image will end here. So I'd say going to about the hips should be fine. 
Are you still in Montreal? Yes, I am. So I really don't just want to subdivide it, it's a problem. I can get rid of the belly button actually. Because this model doesn't need one. Um, So it really is 36 versus 72. I mean, it is just a sub... Okay. Let's do it. Um, that makes this mesh 200k polygons. It's not horrific, but it's not really too friendly either. Um, Combine these two. Reassign base map. Bridge these two. Long neck. <laughs> um, so we need to definitely reduce the poly count. That's going to be the best way to do that. We can just delete edges, sure, but... Um, okay, well, let's start off by getting everything kind of lined up. Probably should have done this before immersion, to be honest, but oh well. move this to like roughly line up the shoulders and I can just sculpt from there. Oh that's slow. There we go, that's better. We just want to line up the height of the shoulders I think. Something like that. Okay. So then we're going to want to oh, no, not like that. I know there is a tool for this, but I think that's easier. Um, the boobs definitely need less polygons. Um, arms as well. Wondering, would it have been better to sort of divide just the neck and do that thing where everything loops back on itself? I'm not sure anymore. I'm gonna get rid of these two as well and edit edge flow of this guy. And then bevel it. Start relaxing out top of turn on looks. Okay, 
so how easy will it be to just delete every other edge? It's not going to be difficult. I'm just wondering how long it will take. I think it's worth it. If it means cutting the poly count almost in half. The hands might get a bit messed up, so I don't know, though, so I need to be careful with loops that go that way. I should have saved my scene before I started doing this, shouldn't I? Nah, oh well. It didn't take that long. I should probably save my scene, scene, scene as I go. I also need to plan out when do I terminate this. Like, do I end at the fires? Because I don't need a full body. Like, I know that's a waste. Um. Depends on the clothes, like how far down I want the clothes to go, because again, like, the ref ends here. But obviously, clothing that hangs below that is still going to affect it, like if I do sim. So having a body helps. It's just a case of where the cutoff should be. Um, the thing is, doing this, I've already removed 20,000 polygons. So it is worth doing, as tedious as it is. And I think, honestly, like, downloading bonus tools, because I'm pretty sure that's where the mfloop selector is. Downloading that and installing it probably isn't worth the time. At some point, yes, but for this task, no. It would have been helpful to have already, though. Uh, this is a commission or the part of a job. Um... No, this is just for me. Like if I did commissions, they'd be a bit too expensive. I feel. Cause my like day rate is quite high, and these sorts of projects take a long time. So it's why I always do projects that I find interesting. But I estimate this project. Granted, there are faster workflows. Like if I just downloaded like a scan model that's got retopo, like the ones you can get on um, 3D scan store. I could just like alter that and it would take like no time at all. Um, so if I was doing it for a client, I wouldn't work the way that I'm currently working. Um, but I do these kind of for me. I like to learn stuff. I've gone into this argument many times with people more, um, more experienced than me and they always leave like, um, what's the word? They always leave the conversation feeling like they've got nowhere. It's because they haven't. <laughs> like, or they they have got nowhere. Um, it's the way I like to work. I do things my way. to do that. No. What's going on here? Weird. 
I need to avoid affecting anything that goes up the neck. I can smooth out everything else, that's fine, but... We're starting to get somewhere with a poly count. I know it's messy before any of you say anything. We shall see. Where do these go? Around the back, cool. It's the thing we're making nice loops. Right, how far down do we want to go this? I'm going to hit really hard wall with this. I know that for sure. Do you use Houdini and what sort of work? Um, so I do use Houdini. Well, I've used it professionally. Um, and I did secretly start using it very, very recently. Um, which I'll give you guys more details on later. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons to use Houdini, but I don't often use it. If that makes sense. I hate this so much. Um, I feel like we can probably cut off the body about here. If I end up needing it later, that's no big deal. I can just add the legs back in. Since we know it's just a sub oh, it's not just a subdivision anymore, is it? <laughs> Fuck. Um, Okay, let's just do a pass, relaxing out topo. Let's see how far this can get us. area. Okay. Yeah, polygon density is a bit screwed. Is that Mona's body? Yes, it is. Let's quickly copy it over. It will save me work later, I think. I can probably cut off the hands, too. Because there's so many things here that I don't need. But I'm more needed just for the general shapes. But yeah, let's cut off the hand. Okay, so then cut off the final level of these because it doesn't smooth correctly. Add the edge flow. Ah! Well, that won't work, will it? Okay. So 
So where's the distribute? Oh, I used to have a script for this. Do I still have it? I don't. Hmm. Maybe we can try reconstructing. Yes, but then the face will get balked up. And the head, I like the amount of polygons it has. Because these are two different meshes. One of them just happened to be a subdivision higher than the other. And this is good enough. Like I'm going to be covering this with clothing. I just needed something for the clothing to interact with. Um, not sure what the hand gesture was, but... Yeah, this should work well enough. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. So let's just do one more pass of smoothing over here. In fact, I can just get rid of these edges now. Let's just do... That works. I can't get rid of the ones that go up the neck, but I can get rid of the rest. Since now we're not completing loops. Okay, let's try smoothing that, see what see what it does. The relax brush is such a helpful tool. Like if you guys don't use the relax sculpting brush, you're doing yourself a disservice. Is this Blender? No, brother. This is Maya. What is crazy? Uh, part about topology me and meshing things together. Yeah, it's like the one of the things that I quite enjoy doing is taking parts from one mesh and putting them into another. Like, there's normally a little bit of problem solving. Granted, this one was quite simple because the um, the difference between edge loops was literally just a subdivision. Like, it was double, which makes it really easy. How do you find random tools? Um, been keeping an eye on it. It's um, it's quite nice for my testing. There's a few things in which it's um, not predictable. Um, but it's very niche things. I'd say like for 99% of the shaders, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the thing that I had issues with was more like rendering volumes inside of fluid, which is behind a corner, like, you know, the full white stupid eye setup that I like to do. Uh, I had issues with that, so I use um, standard normal materials for that. The other thing, and this is a case that's a change in my workflow, is the skin, sorry, the random warp material doesn't have two specular lobes. So I can't do my double spec thing that I like to do for skin. Granted, you don't need two specs to get skin. You can just do a layered material on top. What program is uh, is this? This is Maya. It's a lot like... So I'm, I'm guessing you're fairly new to 3D. Um, so Maya and Blender are very, very similar. Um, Maya is just the one that gets used kind of at bigger studios, basically. But Blender is perfectly capable. It's just not the tool I use. is as it's good enough it's a damn sight but better than the body we had before I will have to re-sculpt this because it is literally just Mona who is a stylized kind of creature more than a person uh, I also need to re-sculpt the neck um, but you know we'll, we'll get there um, my UVs are going to be completely fucked now but I need to redo them anyway so it's fine so we've got texture UVs yeah that's fine and groom UVs that's also fine map one. Yeah, so I'm going to re-UV this. Um, so let's just call this body let's go geo. I'm going to create a group which is transfixed. 
traps. Fixed. Body. Um, what's the name of this character? Um, I need to check like what the name of the character is. I and mean, I guess I could just say Char Allison. I need to check if it's one L or two Ls. Because it is Allison, right? Um, it's two Ls. Char Allison. There you go. Body Geo. And then we can get to the namespace on that guy. Oh, actually, that's a bad idea. Um, Windows. Um, Gem editors, namespace editor. Blah, blah, blah. There you are. Cool, there we go. Shading, next way. We need to get some eyes in there as well at some point. I will be doing a simple eye setup for this project. So I'm not going to be fucking about with my volume eyes. At least I don't anticipate on doing that. Because um, I just want this project to look nice and be simple. I don't really care about pushing my limits in terms of look dev because I've already got the eye project for that. And I think this project would be a good one to prove that, hey, like you can just do simple geometry because I get a lot of like questions and messages on Discord saying like, hey, do I need to do this volume setup? It's like, no. I, I've told everyone so many times that like, you really don't need to do eyes the way that I like to. And so I think this project would be a good way to prove that is if I just go in and um, just do eyes the normal way, make them look really nice. That way you guys won't have to keep asking me about volume rendering of eyes. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll block out some UVs. Uh, I should probably close these holes. Um, I'm gonna delete one more loop. So we got something a bit smoother at the bottom. There we go. I do really want to spread these out, though. I have a chat. Um... One sec, is this a full screen? I got chat on the other screen. I need to check shared files between me and my friend, Matthias. Because it was him that kind of got everything working, essentially. It's not in there. Okay, I'll have it saved somewhere. I guess we can return to that later. Uh, for now, let's just fill the hole. How many is this? 76. Ooh. Okay. Um, fill hole. We need to cut from the front to the back. And then we do the same for a few others. That's actually... Hmm. Now we'll, we'll do it like this for a bit. Be a lot better. Now I can actually see symmetry all X. Makes everything easier. Um, so I'm not sure how many more we should go this way. I'm going to say it's about here. And start cutting horizontally instead. Maybe a little bit further. Yeah, we'll start cutting across at this point. So let's turn off symmetry. 
and I'm going to cut from you to you, and from you to you, and then connect. These should be the same. So I've done everything two loops at a time. Nice and easy. So now what we can do is I'm gonna hate this. Um, okay. Make sure this again. If I get a skeleton. Okay. So then convert that to verts. Get rid of all the edges. Okay. Average verts. Mash G for a while. Cool. And then we just cut this guy. Capped. And then, because I don't like having super sharp edges, they always cause issues. Do that. Uh, these ones will be much easier, or should be. I need to find the front and back though, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool, so that's middle edge. Need to clear out those later. So I'm just gonna mark that by just doing that. And find an equivalent somewhere in here. So we've got the arm there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay. So those two should be opposites of each other. So what we can do to check that, select that, and that's 20 edges, and select that, and that's 20 edges. Cool. So we're going to do topological symmetry for this, because I've already changed the, the world space. So we'll do topo symmetry. And that means when I select one of these verts, it should select the vert on the other side. It did. Cool. So bridge these two. Cool. Did that work? It did. So now we can just continue to fill those up. Three. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Fill hole. Fill hole. Cut that in half. So we need to find the halfway point, which I'm going to assume is that guy, but we'll have to count. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's wrong. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the halfway point. Very unappealing. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. Should be the same on the other side, right? Let's see. Nine. <clears throat> they don't match. Okay. 
Um, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Okay, ignore that. You saw nothing. There's no grid fill. As far as I'm aware, no, they might have recently added it. But I've not seen it. There's probably a trick to it, but I've been doing it this way since 2014. That's when I started doing it this way. So at this point, I'm, I'm locked in on old techniques. Ooh, no. Okay, so let's get these edges, push them, what, strange, okay, so then select all these guys, oh wait, that would be, was, oh no, okay, We'll just make with the topology, it's not a big deal. We're gonna be reusing it anyway. Um so let's turn off symmetry in that case. Extrude. Okay. So then convert to verts. I do like this technique. It's very satisfying. Let me see that again though. By the way, you're going to be doing the model or textures as well. Um, I'm currently doing the model, so I'm not sure what you mean. Um, like, am I misunderstanding something there? Like, I'll be doing textures too. Um, but yeah, I'm currently doing the model, so I'm not sure exactly what that part of the question meant. So, cut the thing in half. Not that way. Okay, we need to make sure that all of these center edges are exactly in center. So what we do, select all those, go to this guy, absolute transform, zero. So they're all zero in the X. Um, if I set that to zero in the Z, it brings them all to center. So I've just set to zero in the X, so they all exactly line up with the middle. Um, if you're doing textures later on. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing textures later on. Um, yeah, um, sorry, I'm, I'm a little confused. Um, mirror. Don't need to cut geometry. Your mesh contains too many polygons. Do you want to smooth it? <laughs> How many polygons is it? Faces 27,000. Really? Okay, I got that down quite a lot. Cool, there we go. 27,000 polygons. Um, fucked up shape. But usable topo. Don't know what happened to my speech there. Um, usable topo. And, uh,. Yeah, it should all work. We can do a quick test. Um, the stream might drop out here. We'll see. Let's 
soon as it hasn't, that's good. There we go. It's really simple, but it works. It'll work well enough for the things we need to do. So yeah, I need to re-sculpt that. Um, but it will do the job. Um, so let's throw some UVs on there. Um, okay, so map one will be our groom UVs because next gen. Tesh UVs will be for Tesh ring, and groom UVs I'll get rid of because that's a relic from when I was doing things in Yeti. So UV set editor, groom UVs delete. Tesh UVs we'll be using later, and so I guess for now we'll delete those, and we got map one. So map one ends up being used for groom, so we want that to be um, in zero to one space. So let's just do mapping, plan on map, map Z. Okay, I gotta set this to UV editing. So we only need groom on the brows, eyelashes, and top of the head. So I know already we can just cut here. Well, I might move that a bit higher. Do there instead. Cut. Moving so. Okay. We will want a center seam for the rest. Might be worth me doing the bonus tools for this. I don't know, the bonus tools I need to reinstall. Okay, we're not doing bonus tools. I guess I don't even need to do that, do I? It's deeply unsatisfying. There we go. intact, I think. Although, do we want the neck? Well, that, yeah, so it's funnily enough you sent that right after I said it, yeah. Um, see, what I'm thinking is... Well, not really thinking. Um, thinking about the main grooms. Peach fuzz-wise, I guess I could do... So does retopper make it easier to change shapes? High poly meshes can't. Well, high poly meshes can make any change that low poly meshes can, because it's just moving polygons, right? Um, but you're going to have an easier time with less polygons. Like there's less for you to worry about. here instead. No, I haven't cut for a while. Cut. We'll do a little bit of nose hair. don't need any on the lips, but I always like to allow for some blending room, so I'll put it like there. That's probably a bit too far, actually. Let's put it about there. The lip line will be here. Well, that's the line on top of that will be the lips. Uh, well, at least for the top lip. It doesn't actually line up for the bottom one. Which is bad topo. Um, 
I might want to slide these loops up later. So we are a bit compressed down here. But this should be there, basically. Should I do that now? Uh, we'll go one loop less. I'll move that later. Let's cut that. Um, we need the hairline separate. We don't want the ears to be so close to everything. So we'll get, cut those off. Satisfying. I want this to do that. Oh <laughs> god, I hate that so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> I cannot point towards how much I hate that. Um, <laughs> god fucking damn it. It's worse on this side, I think. Oh no, it's not. Alright, good. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do I care enough to do that? I think I do. I I really do. Um, at least they're marked. It's just too unsatisfying to keep that in there. There we go. Um, cut you. Cut you. Cut you. Okay, move it so. Let's do an extremely basic unfold with this. Um, most of this will collapse, but that's fine. Um, unfold. The mouth in particular will get really screwed by this. Meanwhile, I need to get some water. Back in one second. scalp, brows, we need this, there's the mouth,
So, next thing. Let's go one loop further out than that, I think. There, maybe. to there. I don't care about this lineup. Cut you over to there. And then cut that. And we can sew these. Might not shut up one. The cleaner line. Doesn't make a difference, I don't think, but I'd just rather it. I'm very picky on this sort of stuff. Um no, even so. And then naturally I'm gonna want to do this. But that, that's unsatisfying. Um, we'll cut like that. In fact, no we won't. We'll cut like that. It's way better. Cut. And then cut the insides again. Still balked. I need to fix that later. So, yeah, still, even though you don't technically need to, I still like avoiding overlapping verts, uh, overlapping um, UVs for groom UVs. What's your thoughts on rendering internal geo to get better at SSS? Is it one of those gim gimmicky things should you add to their reels? No, I think it is helpful. Um, so here's the way to think about it. So if you've got the bridge of the nose, for example, this is the area with probably the thinnest skin in the body relative to like bone distance, right? There's nothing here beside bone and skin, as far as I'm aware. I don't think there's anything between. Um, and so your skin subsurface radius is going to be broadly the same everywhere in your body, right? So in this area, where you've got solid bone immediately behind it, light's going to come in, and you've got your normal amount of subsurface, so it's going to bleed around. Now, it's going to bleed a bit too much, just because there's nothing blocking that light. The logical thing to do then is like, okay, well, I'll just lower the subsurface radius, but now your skin pores aren't getting enough scattering in them. So, there is a very minor, extremely minor, um, purpose to putting the bone behind the skin. Because um, it does mean that you can have correct subsurface scattering, but still get the correct amount of light blocked. Because um, just changing your subsurface um, distance isn't going to get you the same effect. It will get a similar effect, but not the same. Um, so I hope that explains it, like why studios do that. It is rare, like we really don't need to do that very often. But it's not necessary. But yeah, does that make sense? Okay, so 
So, give you a shell, unfold. It is actually something I was debating doing, because I can just get like um, a skull geo from ZBrush and just like drag it through basically. see most of the chest. But I think it'd be a waste to dead I mean if it's just Grimble Splines then we can probably where is that? It's like just above the breast, that'd be about there, right? I guess we can do it. Um That's very unsatisfying. <laughs> um extension I guess we should do the same for the back mm. I'll give this very little more I think like it will get like triple the res of this and that'll be it uh, the neck should get more than that though so let's just grab Fold. Nope. Okay. So we can scale these up. Just because I hate how this has laid them out, let's um, do another layout here. Um, layout. Going to align vertically. Like aligning Y to V is helpful. Um, y. I still want them to be like at least somewhat sensical. I guess we'll just undo to what we had. And then I'll straighten up these ones myself. But alright, if you've ever wondered where the weird shape in sewing patterns comes from. Like when you're making a sleeve in Office Senate, you can't do this. That's where it comes from. That's the shape required to uh, go around a straight line under the arm. Um, Not the most efficient setup, but it'll work well enough. Let's just bring that down here. Okay, so naturally this gets a good amount of space. I want it to be fairly centered. Let's do a layout of this. And we'll lay out Z. 
to V. Let's rotate that around as well. Okay. This needs more resolution, relatively speaking. These need even more resolution, relatively speaking. Unfold. Yeah, UVs are just sewing patterns. Like, it's literally the same thing. You're laying out a 3D object in 2D space. Let's uh, do this properly. So I'm going to move these out of the way. It's a pretty low priority. Should I straighten these out? I feel like I should. Straighten shell. So they take up a lot less space now. So we can scale these up to take up like this entire bottom section. Because eyelashes need a lot of resolution in UVs. Um, that'll do. Give them a little bit of space from each other. So if I do a 1k map, then we get plenty of resolution. Like this is enough at 1k. That's good at 1k. I probably wouldn't use 1k for most of it, but... And 1k is still enough where if we need groom on the body, we can still get away with it. similar match. Um, so 
I don't need an exact match, so I'm not going to bother transferring taxal densities, but it should work well enough. And then we got, then we got these guys, which need to be scaled up. Scale to fit, basically. We're wasting a lot of space down here, though. Um, maybe we can put this more over there. Scale up even more. Let's put this in the center. May as well keep it in the middle at this point. Anything else we want more resolution on? No reason not to give these more space if it's not being used. This should be fine, right? I think so. Using um, well, the internal geo thing makes sense. I think chat is a bit delayed, uh, but I heard it when you said it. All right, sweet. Yeah, I have no idea how long the delays are. Um, it does vary quite a lot, so I apologize about that. Um, but using the skull in my digital right now, uh, results were promising. But I was wondering if it was overkill. Um, no, I mean, it might be for a student project, but honestly, it doesn't matter that much. Um, like, it's still a fun thing to experiment with, and if I saw a student do it, it would stand out to me. Like, it would be like, oh, hey, they, they care. It's, I, I'd care less about them doing it, and more about them putting the effort in to do that. Because it's not a quick process. Like, it requires you to line up a skull and get the depths right. Uh, which definitely, definitely isn't automatic. Um... So, yeah, I mean, good on you for doing that. Let's move the camera over this way a bit. There we go. Um, yeah, about centered now. So, yeah. Did I adjust some screens? There we go. Um, right, so there's our map 1 UVs. So we got UV set map 1. So now, we can save this scene. So we have a basic version of Groom UVs set up. So now we can do our actual UVs, which I do test UVs. New. Texture. UVs. Okay, this one's a lot more simple usually. So I'm just going to do um, mapping, plan a map. I'll do a few of the same cuts. So I'll cut off the arm, I guess, is the first place to start. And I'll do this symmetrically as well. World X. So I'll cut off the arms. Quick cut. Okay. Okay. Then
feel like I copied the UVs from the previous one, but oh well. Yeah, I need to fix these polygons as well. I was thinking like once I've like done a, a second pass in the modeling, I will unfold the UVs again because these distances between um, quads will change slightly. Okay. Do you want to go in here? Cut that out. Let's go in here. Cut these out. In theory, this is already usable. It won't be enough. Um, won't be enough resolution. Like if I use UVs with this. Um, even so. Cut. Even so, edges. So let's try cutting this. Oh, sorry, unfolding this. Let's see what it does. Sick face UVs, which everyone used to do like this for a long time. They always look so sad. Like every time people do UVs like this, they just look really upset. Um. kind of works. That's the thing. This is a usable UV set. Minus the overlap that I haven't fixed. Um, need to fix the mouth. Okay. So how do we want to do this? And what kind of layout do I want to do? 
I need to check my Mari license first. Um, although I can do like face UVs and head and body UVs and stuff like that, which might be the way to go. I'm not sure yet. Um, I guess for now I'll do a five UDIM version, and so let's just move everything off of here. I'm gonna lay this out on its own. Do that. Then everything else that is for the head. Um, what's the resolution on this guy? Text density. Okay. So then set all these guys. Set. So now these are the same scale. Let's turn off symmetry for this guy. Any lineup plans? Uh, I'll do a little bit more line uh, lineup later. For now, I'm just getting the asset like generally where I want it. See, so inside of mouth doesn't need the same textile density, but I may as well. We'll just see how if, uh, how everything else fits first. It's the back of the ear. The inside of the eye, eye socket, I should say. Nostril, have a nostril. I have to clean those out, and also ear. So put that there. Um, so let's sort out these. This one we will do with symmetry. Okay, let's just select a loop here. It's pretty tight. Select you to you. Cut. Nope. Cut. Okay, then we'll do the same for the ear canals, which are quite short, so we can kind of get away with some funky stuff here. Um, let's pick a corner. Unfold all these. Set. These will definitely need reunfolding later. Okay, so next thing, um, let's get the body. Um, it's gonna be huge, isn't it? It is. Uh, okay, so we're gonna need to cut that into pieces. Which way? I guess we can cut from just below the breast, um, stuff like that. Unfold. Fold. Okay. One point five, make sure it's centered. 
Any plans on using 3D scan textures? Yes. Um, I need to reach out to James, uh, but I fully intend on um, using some 3D scan sort of stuff. Yeah. So this has a lot of room around it, so I feel like I could probably um, put some of the arm stuff around this. So they're a bit too long, aren't they? Motherfucker. <laughs> um, okay. How much do I care? How much do I care? Let's lay this out on its own. And get... It's 20% smaller in UV space. That would make it fit now. Side of the body is that on? Just lean that over a little bit. Nice to do that. Um, so, what aspects of the painting do you want to depict? Um, I think lighting and renders will be the fun part. Yeah, I mean, so there's a few parts I want to figure out artistically. So, first is the background. Like, I don't want to make an actual background. And plus there is all this, like, really painterly stuff. Um, so I'm trying to think of a creative way I can kind of tackle that. Because there's a bunch of ways we could go about it. Um, not entirely sure which one I'm going to go with yet, so we'll see. Um, this feels really wasteful. Sorry, I'm just 
still kind of caught up in the UV stuff. Um, we've got one more Udim to play with. Let's just get these in there. There we go. We have one more Udim, although that would probably be used for eyes, I guess. Um, that's assuming we stick with five Udims and one UV set, which we won't. Um, but I kind of want to like experiment with it, to be honest. So let's check in some messages. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of stuff I'm curious about. Oh, I need to do the clothing too, so I'll need another UV set. Well, there's a different object, but still. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of everything, to be honest. I'm looking forward to figuring out some stuff. I haven't done, like, any creative um, 3D work in a while. I've done a few, like, hero characters where it's, like, experimenting with different looks. But it wasn't really, like, just me alone, you know? I've not, like, had time to, like, just push myself for a while. So, I'm just happy to kind of do a bit of everything. These UVs might be good enough for now. Let's just center these. What are the teeth doing? So they've got their own Udim. Um, and they are a lot bigger. Um, so these are 12 set. I can fit all these together. So let's just scale that. the palette, isn't it? So the topo's not going to change. We're pretty safe at this point to take this back into ZBrush and start on the um, everyone's favorite sculpting process. I need to spend some more time on the sculpt because they're very simplistic right now. It looks quite cartoony. I also don't think this currently supports gaps. So I'm about to do some funky stuff. It's a thing. Has open my uh, mouth too. So if we go in, Arnold subdivision C two subdivs. I 
my thing starts to sit together a bit better. Okay. There's another mesh. Yeah, there we go. Let's get into ZBrush. File. Export selection. Modeling. Maya. Exports. Body. Underscore Geo. Yes. I only care about vert positions from this. Okay, so I need to rename this one. Just so it doesn't clash. Okay, append. And then import. Um, there we go. So there's a difference in body. So we'll need to do a fair bit of sculpting. Um, let's get some reference. 3D scan store. I always use 3D scan store for reference. It's really helpful. So bodies, anatomy reference. I don't know if I want reference poses. Female. Young. These are censored, so I'm pretty sure these are safe to be on stream. I'm not sure. Just in case. But I'll basically just sculpt with these on my other screen. I just need to find a good pose. Uh, headphones. So these are um, Steel Series Arctis Pros. The newest ones are the Nova Pros. Um, but yeah, these are Arctis Pros. The specific ones I'm wearing are like a few years old now. Okay, so let's start doing some sculpting. Um, I'm gonna there we go. Where's my pen? There it is. So let's start the neck first because it's looking a bit funky. Hi, I'm looking at Thailand. Uh, cool. So my question, is it easier to treat uh, teeth and gums as one mesh or several? Uh, so, in terms of look dev, it doesn't make a huge difference. You, you're basically trading one problem for another. Um, so if you decide to do them separate, you're going to have better control in terms of the subsurface on each one but it's going to be harder to make them blend. Um, but if you have them as one mesh, the blend is kind of automatic, but now you really depend on the quality of the maps that you're given. Um, and technically it's less precise um, having it as one mesh, um, but there's a bunch of stuff that gets so, so much easier when you just do one geo. I personally prefer to do one geo if that's a more helpful answer to your question. So I'm gonna smooth that. Um, let's move it one more time. And just 
re import that base mesh. There we go. So now we just. I'm going to sculpt on this. I'm not going to worry about reprojection yet. Reprojection feels like a later me problem. I just want this to look like somewhat of a natural body. ZBrush, please. <laughs> Just reduce the volume, then, damn it. Um, sculpting is probably the easier way to go about this. too dominant, I think. We also need a bit more of a sense of the pack. This entire thing's going too far forward, isn't it? But yeah, Jesus Christ, the back arch. The power. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go about let's like that. general needs to be wider. Some serious fucking V sync issues.
How do you motivate yourself after working a full day and then working on personal projects? I mean, so right now, I'm not working. Um, I start my next job in March, and I finished my last uh, last one a week ago. And so I figured now would be a good time um, to get back into personal work. I used to stream and work at the same time. Um, but for the last, like, basically a year ago, I went through one hell of a fucking character development streak in terms of, like, shit just going sideways. Um, to the point of, like, a few people in my Discord joking that I should get a shaman. Uh, everything was going wrong. So I just got out of doing personal work and focused on my health for a while. Since then, I've lost, God, 40-something pounds of weight, about 22 kilo. Um, got a hell of a lot fitter and focused on my health for the last, since August. And prior to that, I was just focusing on being myself, like just enjoying my free time, living in a, a country that I'm not from. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not the best example of like, oh, hey, how do you motivate yourself to keep doing work? Because I just had everything go sideways. I, I couldn't do it. Um, but yeah, I did used to stream and work at the same time. Uh, it doesn't how I motivated it, I just wanted to do my own thing. I, I wanted to do CG work um, that wasn't just the same shit that I did at my actual job. There's not really much else to it, to be honest. Um, just if you don't find your professional work f like really fulfilling, then you do some additional um, personal work. That's kind of it. size of my character's head compared to these scans. Um, side view, this muscle should be nearly vertical. It shouldn't be like slanting way far forward or backwards. Unless your character's got really bad posture. Which is a valid thing to do. Um, but it's a not a good starting point. things I'm battling with is that my base mesh was like really cartoony. Feels like it attaches too high. Like this should be like there or something.
So your elbow's not locked out, so I need to ignore that part of the ref. Um, I know you guys can't see what I'm looking at, but I'd get banned if it was on stream. Making a hundred body meshes. Don't do that. <laughs> um, just make one. Learn how to reuse it well. Then make another when you realize that one mesh isn't enough. Then make another when you've got a special case that you need to fit. Then make another. <laughs> You'll keep um, finding reasons to alter them. So of things that like I don't really personally buy too much into having like a universal mesh for everything. Um, like you can use meshes for a lot of work, like a lot, and have it still continue to work just fine. Um, and definitely like within the realm of my projects I could have done them mostly with one mesh. Um, but sometimes you just need asymmetries in the model. I don't think there's a way to avoid it to be honest. Super subtle, but it really helps. Um, I think I don't use the standard brush often, but there's times where it's just really helpful for getting in specific forms. It's a very powerful brush. Let's take a look at the um, skeletal structure in this area. So I still don't actually understand this part. Like, I know the bones that go towards it, but I don't understand how they overlap each other and how the muscles attach specifically there. Do you ever find yourself uh, obsessing over minute details um, on the sculpt rather than the whole project? Any tips to avoid that? I used to a lot until I realized it doesn't fucking matter. Most people don't notice the details that you spend time putting in. What they do notice is the fact the skin tone is slightly too red, um, or the skin is slightly too shiny. Um, they'll notice that sort of stuff before they notice the skin pores connecting correctly. Um, so generally, something you can do to help fight it, granted it's nice to indulge in it sometimes and just hammer on a detail, I'd love to, my entire eye setup. Um, but if you spend time where you just go, okay, blur my eyes, what do I notice is wrong? Or if you get your reference and get your render, put them both into Photoshop, do a eight pixel blur, a four pixel blur, whatever, um, compare the difference, fix that before you fix the tiny, tiny details. Because people don't care, like they just don't. Um, people are more likely to notice bad light integrations than they are to notice bad asset work. I mean, hell, like films, like VFX, right? Like, almost every single instance, almost every single instance of like, oh, look at this bad CGI, is just half decent asset work where animation weren't given the time they needed, or lighting weren't given the time they needed, or comp weren't given the time they needed. Um, 
because usually assets do get quite a lot of time. Not necessarily enough, but we get more time than the other departments. And the way to test for this is that bad VFX shot, does that asset look good in another shot? If it does, it's not the asset. It's the later departments. It's not their fault. Like They get shafted. Um, but that's something I recommend is like, look at the final image and what affects that most. And that will be, that should, quote unquote, should be what you focus on. Um, but it's fun to do the other stuff. So I don't blame you for getting like locked into details. Um, what else? I think that's good enough for now. The boobs look really unnatural, but I also don't want to just sit here and spend an hour on stream sculpting tits, you know? So, we have starting to get more stuff in place. So, what I'm going to do now is save this. And we're going to start forming the uh, eyes, I guess. Actually, doesn't fit too badly. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Um, I just need to get the teeth and stuff in there. Append. I haven't exploited them yet. Deflation could be an option. It would help, but yeah, I think the the model right now just feels too round, um, which just comes across as creepy. Because one thing that I find a lot of primarily male, but not always um, artists, will draw or sculpt boobs like there's two circles that are stuck onto the chest, which just isn't how they work. Like. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a whole way, a whole list of things that people get wrong. But I'm not above it, like, because I've not practiced enough. It's not really something I sculpt too often. Um, I'm not one of those artists. I like to avoid that sort of shit. Uh, modify, free transformations. File, export selection. Um, inner, mouth. Just going to put template for now. Ah, wrong thing. Close this. Yeah, I'm going to stream until 1 o'clock, same as yesterday. Click that. Um, I'm going to stream until 1 o'clock, same as yesterday. And then... Um, go on a... I'm really fancying Subway today. Like, sandwiches. So, I'm going to go get a subway and go for a walk because I always make sure to get a walk in um, and then yeah we'll kind of get back to streaming I imagine around 3 o'clock again but it's still an hour left so um, let's do in a mouth template geo okay then so divide that a few times twice should be enough uh, import import it back in there we go If you're wondering why I do that, by the way, so quick tip, um, if I go into my geometry, delete higher. So what you'll notice is if I if I put this here, shift S, that just saves it to my screen. So this is not alterable anymore. If I subdivide twice, obviously it's smoother. But if I go back, these are no longer the same. Look how this has like more definition in a lot of these areas. And so I'm going to put that there, shift S. Um, but I want the higher subdiv, uh, subdiv levels. So I'm just going to go back to the lower subdiv, import that geometry. And what this will do is it will bring back those details, but I keep the, um, the higher res. It's basically a transfer, and ZBrush does it automatically when you bring in a mesh with the same topology as your current mesh. Uh, so long as you're on the same uh, subdiv level, which is one. If you go subdiv anything above that, the point order is different between Maya and ZBrush, so it gets a bit messy. Um, but at subdiv zero or subdiv one, uh, it works just fine. It's really nice. There we 
There you go, got some teeth. Okay. Um, so we need to get a Karunkle in there too. Um, which I'll probably do with a separate Geo. I guess for now. Let's append a sphere. There it is. So nothing's lined up yet, so I'm not going to be too worried about how things are, but... Okay, that will do for now. We'll just get this in there. Can you show me what you understand by secondary shapes on your model? Uh, if you give me one moment, I can. I mean, this model's not very developed yet, it's almost entirely primaries, but I can uh, get something in there for you. So, geometry. Well, it's just mirror and world. There you go. Color. Fill object. Okay. Color fill object. I find that the mask color is really, really nice. So I like to apply it as like actual poly paint. But like it's almost perfect visu uh, visually to me to have as like kind of breakup tones. Uh, right, so what I define as secondary shapes. It will depend on the art style, um, but for something like a realistic face, obviously primary, we've got, you've got a nose, it's got nostrils, you've got eyelids, it's all cool, uh, accidentally drawing a skull, you got lips. Okay, so secondary shapes for something like the mouth would be this sort of stuff, where I'm going in, I'm getting all these shapes in there. That would be what I define as secondary. So your shapes where you're drawing in kind of the anatomy, in a sense. Like if you connect all this up, what you end up with is just the muscles of the mouth. Um, I mean, there's not really much for me to explain. Secondary shapes are kind of a fundamental of modeling. So given that I don't teach modeling, I'm not I've not really put much thought into how to explain 
the hierarchy of forms specifically. But yeah, this sort of stuff where you're not sculpting the lips, but you're sculpting the stuff around them, that's secondary. And I think just by definition, that's what that means. So I'm just going to remove those. Okay, so let's spend a little bit of time. Hi from Algeria. Hi, man. It's really cool to have people dropping in from such different countries. Shading the hair to get this sort of stuff in it will be really fun. We shall see. Um... Smooth out that cheap on a touch. Um, doesn't it go from primary, secondary, tertiary, last? Yeah, so primary is like your, like, that's your primary. Anything you can see here is your primary. Anything you can see here is secondary. Anything you can see here would be tertiary. So things like little skin pores, whatever. Like, that would be where you get into tertiary. Um, but where people draw those lines varies a lot. Like, really a lot. Um, so I wouldn't put too much stock into what each word means and just apply it to, like, how people give you feedback. I think that will help you a lot. Okay, let's. This nose is getting a bit lumpy, isn't it? Let's work on that for a bit. Oh, I need to fix the ears. Some of this will need to be fixed in Maya, but I can fix the basics in ZBrush. It might be a little bit quicker that way. There we go. Fix the inside of the nose next. And then I'm going to work on the eyelids. Well, after I've done the, the nose itself, because I wanted to work on that, didn't I? Okay, it's trying really hard to uh, push back. Why is it smoothing out that way? Nothing that trusty clay buildup can't resolve. Let's take some time on the nose, shall we? Because it's looking rather lumpy. Uh, I'm going to get some scan ref because you can never have too much. Again, I cannot scream the, um, the importance of good reference enough, and I cannot praise uh, the work of James Busby enough, 3D Scan Store. Like, honestly, his site. Just as a reference alone, is fantastic. I think I've got some on my pure FG actually. Uh, like I said, I made some progress uh, with 3D models, but uh, my brain is telling me to make sure I nail everything first time, retopo, and then focus on uh, UV mapping. Yeah, I mean, don't. <laughs> um, you're going to have a better time if you just learn to do stuff. Like, you don't need to worry about everything being perfect first time. Just worry about making things look vaguely right. And then worry about uh, making them fit together. Um, and then 
just iterate. Like honestly, iteration is the, the best way. You do a basic model that allows you to start new Vs and so long as your topo is usable, you don't need to redo it at any stage. Um, like people will be like, oh that topo is not perfect. It's like, who gives a fuck? Like, people get way, way too into that stuff. And I used to as well. It's like the whole thing of like, oh, never have a triangle in your model. It's like, well, why not? <laughs> like the moment you subdivide, it becomes a quad. And the moment you render, it's a triangle anyway. Um, like it really doesn't matter. And like, yeah, it's good to avoid triangles as just a general, like not rule, but general kind of consideration. Um, but it doesn't mean you have to. Like, if adding one triangle can prevent you from needing to add like hundreds of quads, like fix a loop, just add the triangle. Um, people get very elitist and absolutionist with a lot of stuff. And I get really tired of it. Um, do you make another mesh for the slightly thinner membrane of your caruncle to blend into the eye? Uh, or do you work transition and shading? I like to have, um, I like to have a separate geometry, uh, for the caruncle. Um, that has like a kind of transparency enabled. You could do it with refraction, but I find it never quite renders correctly, so I just use transparency. Um, but yeah, it's it's the way I tend to work. It's not the way you have to work though. Like you can work however you feel comfortable, really. Uh, you're so great, thanks, man. Um, thanks for uh, all what you share. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I got to where I am through a lot of free tutorials online, so it's only fair to repair. It. I like teaching too, so it's a win-win for me. Although I'm sure at some point someone will get a job that I don't because of this sort of stuff, but you know, so be it. I'm already established enough to, like, not never have to worry about work because I'm currently unemployed, but um, I've got enough portfolio and stuff to not really worry about like feeding competition. I just want to get people to be able to do what I get to do daily is work on cool films with cool people. Don't tell them I said that though. It's not not my character. Okay. It's Looks like it's back. It's weird. It doesn't say it. it doesn't say that I dropped any frames. Okay, I'll keep going. I'm gonna watch the uh, the stream a bit more closely. Nah, I'll stay. I'll stay. 
it's like I'll stay the rest of the hour. I don't know how much of a delay there is in chat versus what you guys see. Hmm. I wonder what's causing it. It's weird. Am I just painting? Oh, I am. There we go. Okay. Feels a bit better. See, capturing her eyes is going to be quite tricky, I think, because they vary a lot. Like in this on the bottom lid kind of ends here and the rest of it's caruncle at least you know it looks like that's happening it's obviously not but yeah it's her eyes vary quite a lot depending on the angle again like obviously when she's looking down at the camera top lid's going to come down so her eyes will be more narrow so I need to not do that um, but yeah there's a lot of variety Like this one, she she's like slightly frowning, so it's not ideal ref in terms of eye sculpting. But you can see how this continues on a little while after the uh, a little while after the rest of the eye. So it's more like that, which kind of forces this area like that. She's got very interesting eyes, I'll give her that. Fighting Tapo. Shit. <laughs> um. Okay, well, we'll slide the Tapo later. I'm not going to worry too much about it now because we're too early in the process to care. So that feels a bit better. Feels more like her. She got a bit of this thing going on as well where this starts to kind of fold over a little bit to get like a really thin line where basically if I overdo it you get like this and then you get this little cutting above it to give you this. You see it there? Do that thing where I draw on the eyebrows again. Okay, so it lines up there. Then out there, 
is the thickest point. And then it continues about an iris, uh, iris, iris, iris width after the edge of the eye, which will put it about there, from the front view. So let's connect those up. That's obviously not correct, so let's thicken that up a bit. lines in there, give the impression of actual hairs, and then something you can do is invert that again, just take some sections out. It's a really nice way to get the impression of eyebrows without getting too deep into actually drawing them. Uh, what do you think um, about significantly more senior artists putting students on blast uh, for doing their work close to the... So, what do you think um, about significantly more senior artists putting students on blast? I mean, that in of itself is already fucked. Um, on Twitter and LinkedIn for doing work close to their speciality. That's just a dick move. Um, yeah, I don't care who the, the artist is. If they've been a dick like that, like putting students on blast, then fuck them. Um, like, there is a time and a place to, like, put a student on blast, but it's when they wrong you. It's when they do something that is, like, going to harm others. You don't just do it because they're doing work similar to you. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope I've not misinterpreted that, but, yeah, that's, if it's just a student doing their own thing, and a more senior person ripped them apart for it, then fuck that more senior person. Like they're an arsehole. But students need to be like looked after, nurtured. I mean hell, it's literally like one of the rules in my Discord if any of you actually read it. Um which is like, hey, like be supportive and with criticism, like, keep it constructive. Like, you don't want to just go after a student for no reason. It's weird. I don't like the idea of that. I fucked up the nose, didn't I? I kind of want to draw some kind of eyelashes on too. So I should probably clarify something. 
When I said, <laughs> Jesus Christ, uh, when I said earlier that there is a time and place for blasting a student, not in public on like a great big LinkedIn or Twitter post. Like, call out a student when they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Don't like put it on the entire internet for everyone to see. Let's just, yeah. Doing that for any reason is a dick move. Unless that student like killed your family or, some, or something. Little something. Okay, so we're starting to get somewhere, and this has UVs too, so we can start getting displacement and stuff out of this. Um, I do need to get actual eyes in there at some point, um, and we do need to work on the teeth too. Just gonna quickly block out a hairline. Do you know anyone that specialises in cinematics? A few actually. Um, depends on what kind of cinematics as well, though. Like if you mean like video game cinematics, um, I do. Although off the top of my head, I can't remember the name. I know a few people who work in video game cinematics, like a Blur and stuff. Um, but I've put that up too high, haven't I? Hairlines are so finicky to get right without doing an actual lineup. This angle looks really weird. I'm going to remove this hairline painting stuff because it's just going to look strange. At this stage, anyway. Okay, so let's check some of our angles, shall we? She's looking up, so I need to keep that in mind. I think. I've got too much volume here, haven't I? Yeah, that looks better. Put four fingers on the forehead. Fair, yeah, I actually I forget that that's like a trend at the moment as well, right? Like it keeps appearing on um on like TikToks that I see. But I don't actually have TikTok, but I see TikToks like everywhere else. Everyone just steals from there now. It's like the new like you know people used to steal from Reddit and that sort of stuff. Um, but I'm going way um too out there with it. So my student reel work. Um, yeah, I mean, my student reel is like seven years ago now, though. Like, people can have an entire career and quit in, in that amount of time. This angle's working rather well, actually. Um... My jaw needs a bit more roundness, doesn't it? Like, is it rounder here? Yes. Yes, I think so. Um, maybe a little bit too strong. I think that looks a bit better. Um, Back of the lips. <laughs> oh, that looks weird. 
Okay, yeah, we need to thicken up back our lips a bit. Okay. Too thin still, but gives us a bit more to work with. That bit's looking a bit funky. Yeah, Asher, I think he was, like you said, um, speciality. I think he interpreted spirituality, is that word. That's the way I read it, at least. Something I need to do, actually. Um, brush. Modifiers. It's enough to modify for damn standard. shock to that angle though, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what have you seen? <laughs> So, someone who will remain unnamed. Um, we made a creature um, previously been in contact with a very senior artist who shall remain unnamed later, saw a rant on social media 
Potion that's taken away from his job pool. Yeah, I mean, but he's more senior. He doesn't have to worry about you. Like, I think one of the key things about being more senior is if you're worried about juniors taking away your potential job pool, pool, pool you're not really a senior. Like, being a senior isn't just being a junior, but better. Like, because that... You'd be fucked. Like, there's always going to be juniors that are better than you. Uh, and they still are. Like, there's juniors who can wipe the floor with my skill set. What being a senior does is, hey, this tool's just broke. Oh, that's fine. I know a different workflow from 15 years ago that we used to do in Lightwave. Like, seniority brings with it the ability to debug, like, lightning fast. That is what saves productions when they're getting stuck. When they, you know, if you've got a team of juniors and they've never seen something before, the senior's probably seen it a million times. Um, so if you're a senior artist who, and this is this might be a shit take, but if you're a senior artist who legitimately feels threatened by juniors, you, you're not really aware as to what you're adding to the studio. Like, n you know more than the junior does it doesn't mean that your models will look nicer, it doesn't mean that your topo will be better, but you will be able to do a lot of stuff that they can't. Um, and I think that gap never truly closes either. Like, if you look at... So I've been doing CG since 2012, and professionally since 2017. So seven years industry, 12 years total. Um, or approaching seven years industry, it's not quite yet. Um, June, almost there. Um, but... If you used to compare me to someone who's been in the industry for 12 years, the actual imagery won't be very different. Like, they will hit notes quicker than I can, uh, in most cases, I imagine. Um, but if I needed to set up a really unique shader, or if the way that I do skin usually doesn't work for that show, I'm going to have to go into like kind of an R&D mode and figure stuff out. But they've already figured it out like five years ago. So for them, it's like, alright, cool, let's do this other thing. Like they they have that kind of attitude of, oh, it'll be fine. And they just make it work. Um that's what seniority gives. Seniority does not give skill. Not in terms of art. Um I think art is way too individual to say time equals talent. It just doesn't. Because it can also happen where you have people with twenty years experience who never push themselves never did anything particularly great and therefore artistically are being passed by people and also don't know that much um, so experience alone means nothing but it doesn't mean that as a senior you should always be scared of juniors you know it just it feels weird to me I know that was a bit of a rant but it bothers me a lot when people with senior seniority don't look after juniors and kind of nurture them and help them like Creatures are hard to do. I commend your work, sir. Um, I hope <laughs> uh, I hope I get to high five everybody on stream one day. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Uh, right, okay. So uh, I think we can start doing lineups now. Yeah. I'm not holding anything. So annoying. God, that okay. That angle's weak. That angle is really weak. Um. We're going to have to work on this some more, but let's work on the lower res. Okay, so we're going to export this. To export as modeling, ZBrush, sculpting, exports. Um, wondering if I can send you my reel for portfolio review, if on Discord or else. Uh, thanks. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, send it through on Discord. Uh, there's a show reel section, or you can put it in WIP if you want to, but show reels um, or portfolios, I can't remember the name. There's a Discord channel for that. Um, put it in there, and when I get a chance, I'll take a look. Uh, I'm going to stream for the next 15 minutes, then I'm going to go get a Subway sandwich. I think I'm still going to get a Subway. Um, go for a walk, because I won't get my steps in. And then come back and continue streaming, and hopefully without too many tech issues, because that was insufferable. Uh, but yeah, so we got that exported, let's get into Maya. 
Okay, so oh, let's uh, close. Let's save and close this actually. Uh, in fact, actually, what I will need to do, probably off stream, is these pictures were like dragged and dropped, but they're not actually stored on my PC right now. I think I can save them out of here, but it might be better. Um, well, I can export selected image. All right, I'll do that. Um, I'll set these up for a lineup. I also need to message Allison because there's a few pictures on her Instagram that I'd love if she can send through like the originals because they're like really helpful angles. Um, not part of the set that she sent me. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Put that over there. Okay, so file, import. Modeling. Scenes no exports. Oh, I'm in Mona. Okay, thought that was weird. Transfixed. Damn, your consistency is pretty dope. What consistency? <laughs> I I've been gone for the last five weeks. What fucking consistency? Um. <laughs> Oh man, I'm anything but uh, consistent. Okay, so there's the uh, new and old. Let's go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, because it's a good practice, is blend shape these two. Uh, deform, blend shape. Ah! Oh, every fucking window. Why not? No, oh, wrong way around. Deform, blend shape. Yeah, there we go. It's just better practice, because it means that you keep all your material binds and everything. Um, and you keep all your UVs. Feels a bit more natural too. Discord channel link is not working. Oh shit! Okay. Um. Okay. That's not good. Fuck off, Kaspersky. <laughs> Kaspersky. Jesus. I'm definitely losing my ability to speak. It's great. Um, I'm gonna generate a new one now. Um, so. Invite people. Edit invite link. Never expire. Generate new link. There you go. Uh, I'm not going to edit the stream to add it in the description now. Um, I'll do that after. Just to avoid fucking about with editing streams that are already unstable. Um. 10 more minutes. So let's see, what render canvas do we have? Yeah, we need to get Crunkle Geo in the actual IGO. Um, that displacement mesh, no displacement added to this. What else do I need? Not sure. Gonna throw on the random walk. There we go. 
Um, let's grab this light. Selected. Something off about the subsurface, isn't there? For like a scale of ten. And there we go. Obviously, I don't want it that high, but... Let's sort of see what the different albedo models do. This one looks familiar. Getting a bit of that coming through. Translucency looks like it'll be a really powerful setting for bone. Because it's not changing the radius. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn how to use these, essentially. But for now, let's turn down the translucency. Yeah, that's backscattering, right? So that will say it like here. Hit render. Yeah, so that bounces back at the camera. That acts more diffuse. And that's more backscattering. But darkens everything down. So that would be that needs to be very subtle values. Is that light from the background? I'm sorry, I'm not sure I follow. Um, do you mean like the background of a painting? If so, no, it's just some woods. Oh, on the air, it's from that little light that I placed. I think that'll be it for the stream. So let's get the principle back on there. Renders much, much quicker. I can try out the different dipole stuff as well. Or even the skin. In fact, yeah, let's, let's quickly test out the skin material. I haven't used it yet. Rombo skin. Skin layers, even.
This is basically just the L shaders one as far as I'm aware. With some extra nice stuff added. This does give quite a quite nice look though. So I might experiment with this later. a bit too red for my eye. I mean, it is grey skin right now, but... Shifting towards purple. Yeah, I need to read his documentation. So it comes out. I mean, I can just change the um, mid and deep colors. We'll see. For now... Progressive render enabled. Good. Cool. Well, that'll be it for this stream. Put the principle back on. Kill that. And then, yeah, when I get back, we'll, um, I guess get some eyes copied in. So that we've not got this, like, creepy, like, it eye thing going on. Um, and then we can spend some time doing actual lineups with the ref of Allison. And we'll see how it goes from that. Uh, but yeah, so I'll be back in approximately two hours. So about three o'clock, maybe earlier. Um, it just gives me time to like, go have food and go for a walk. Um, I don't like picking one or the other at the moment. So, yeah, I'll I'll be back. And, yeah, I've, I've already said what we'll do. So, I'm rambling. I can feel the ramble coming on. So, um, yeah, have a good lunchtime. And I'll see you in about, I don't know, two hours, an hour and a half, stuff like that. Anyway, see ya.